This is the sterling money, uh, paper money issues of the British Overseas Territories. Um, now, there's a lot of overseas territories, and let's start off with a definition. You've got the Crown Dependencies as well as the Overseas Territories. The Crown Dependencies, the Isle of Man, Guernsey and Jersey. Um, technically, they're the pounds that are issued in those three uh, dependencies are not sterling. They are the Isle of Man pound, the Guernsey pound, the Jersey pound, and they've got, as you can see here, they've got their own international currency codes. Um, and British Overseas Territories is, is very different. It's a real hodgepodge. And here we are. We're going to talk about uh, the Falklands and Gibraltar and St. Helena, St. Helena, um, uh, who technically, again, they issue pounds, but they're technically not sterling, although we, we'll discuss that a little bit further when I get to them. Um, these are all the British Overseas Territories. Uh, and as you can see, without spending too much time on them, um, they use different currencies. Uh, Bermuda and Cayman Islands are the only ones that issue their own currencies, albeit they're not sterling. They're in their own, the Bermuda dollar and the Cayman's Island dollar. Uh, the others use other currencies, so that um, Montserrat, for example, and um, Anguilla uh, use the um, East Caribbean dollar, even though they're not independent. Uh, the other users of the East Caribbean dollar are um, independent island nations in the Caribbean. Uh, and finally, just, a, just at the very bottom there, just as a, a small anomaly, um, the sovereign basis, the, this is the UK sovereign basis on Cyprus, Akrotiri and so on, um, are, are the only parts of the, uh, uh, the British world that ever used the euro. Uh, and, and they still use the euro, even though we've left the uh, European Union, they, they've kept the euro because that is the currency of Cyprus. And quite clearly, it's more convenient for them to use that rather than sterling. Um, so uh, it's a real hodgepodge. You can see some of them there using US dollars. Turks and Caicos use uh, islands in the also the Caribbean. Um, they use um, uh, the US dollar and uh, and so on. So it's, it's a mixed mixed bag. Anyway, we're going to talk about Falklands, uh, Gibraltar and St. Helena. These are the three current issues. And as you can see, They've all got uh, the Queen on them. Um, these are the current issues, uh, just as an example of what we're going to be talking about. Um, now, the Falkland Islands. Now, the first notes from the Falkland Islands were, I say here, 1899, because nothing earlier than that has uh, survived. Um, the Falkland Islands uh, were claimed and settled by the British from 1833 onwards, but um, as we know, from fairly recent history, the Argentinians have got a claim on the Falklands. Um, they went so far as to invade back in 1982, um, but um, that invasion was uh, defeated um, within a few months. The Britain, Briti British sent a, a naval and um, air task force out there. Um, but uh, so they remain British, albeit a disputed territory. And in 1899, um, after an issue in 1842, which nobody's ever seen, uh, which apparently a thousand pounds worth of notes were issued, uh, denominated in US dollars um, uh, for use, obviously, locally. But there were very few notes. 97% um, of them had been redeemed by 1845. So chances of ever seeing any of those are pretty remote. But they, they were issued um, from half a dollar up to $50. Um, so 1899, um, this is the first design, and instead there's only three designs that were ever, that have ever been used in the Falklands. And this one here is pretty traditional. Um, anybody who um, uh, follows the British Commonwealth notes and British Empire notes around the world will, will know that this design was used, all they did was change the name of the, uh, the territory. That was used in various other countries. Um, anyway, here we are. They had the five shilling note. Um, and as you can see, I've left the edge open of that image. Um, they were in books and they would be torn out. You can see there's just a sort of counterfoil perforation marks down the left hand side. And that's how they were issued this 1899 series. Uh, this is an example, obviously, of an unissued one. Um, and there was a five shilling, there was a pound, and here's an issued pound. 
exceptionally rare, these things. I mean, nobody's ever going to, well, yes, you might get one in auction, but you're going to have to spend quite a lot of money. I mean, you know, 10,000 pounds or more even uh, to buy one of these things. So very much sought after. Uh, so they, they did the uh, the five bob, they did the pound, and there was also the fiver. And this is, again, it's an unissued note. This one, I don't know whether any issued fibers have survived, but they're, they're obviously all exceptionally rare. Now, um, they lasted, that was the first issue um, in the Falklands. That lasted from uh, 1899 to 1920. Uh, now, the next series, starting in 18, 1921, went through to 1982. So these notes were unchanged for 60 years, apart from the change in the image of the sovereign. This is George V here. It's a pound note from 1927. Um, any George V note from the Falkland Islands, you know, bearing in mind it's a tiny population there, at that time it would be between two and 3,000 people. So, you know, tiny note runs, um, even fewer have survived. Uh, so exceptionally rare. And this one's an issued note. It's in very good condition. And, and again, you'd be having to pay well into five figures to get something like this. But um, it's it's a it's not not a very exciting design. But um, you know, it was it, you know they were happy with it for sixty years. And there were three denominations of this. There was a ten bob, ten shillings. That is half a pound for those of you who are not uh, ever lived in the, uh, uh, the the pre pre decimal period. So there was a 10 shilling note, there was a pound note, and there was a fiver. Uh, this is the pound, this is George VI, and you see they switched him round. So that the image of George VI on the left-hand side of the note looking to the right, um, unlike uh, George V here, it was the other way around. Um, and here we are, 1938. So by 1938, from 1921 to 1938, they'd issued 100,000 of these notes. Um, so very small print runs, and again, few survivors. George VI is findable. Um, the five is quite difficult, but the other, the ten bob and the pound, you can still find those fairly much. But it didn't really change as a design. Um, all of these notes, incidentally, were um, uh, printed by uh, Delarue, including the first series. So Delarue got a had a monopoly on the Falkland Islands notes from 1899 uh, right through to the present day. Um, so here's the pound note with the queen on, and as you say, she's on the right now, looking to the left. This is the 1974 uh, pound. Um, only unusual feature of this is that the serial number runs to six digits. I only did that on two occasions, and this is the, uh, the pound note. Um, and here's just a little collection. There's the, um, the 10 shilling note um, top left, which is a George VI one. It's George VI uh, Fiver, which is rare, as you can see from the serial number, C, just over 5,000. That uh, means in 30 years, they'd issued just over 5,000 of those notes. And um, later, later on in this series, 1975 is the, uh, the first date here, um, they added a £10 to the series. Um, because obviously there's a bit of inflation that occurred, occurred by then. They needed, needed a larger denomination note. And the £10 note in top condition is pretty hard to find nowadays. Um, I was lucky to get this thing years ago, but I think you can pay five, six, seven hundred pounds for one in uh, you know, uncirculated or as good as uncirculated condition. So quite, quite scarce. Not, not terribly exciting design, but pretty scarce note. So that's the second series of um, um, Falkland Island notes. Um, now, according to my calculations, um, in 40 years, they issued 90,000 10 shilling notes. Um, in 60 years, they only issued 100,000 five pound notes. So that's, you know, 100,000 notes in 60 years. I mean, that makes Irish notes, for example, look like um, you know, they're extremely common. Um, you know, very small print runs. Uh, and finally, as you can see here, the, the, the 10 bob note uh, became a 50 pence note um, when they decimalized in 1970s, 1971. They decimalized in Falklands, just as they did in the rest of the UK. Um, and again, the note didn't change. It 
just changed 10 shillings to, to 50 pence. So um, 1983, this is after the invasion uh, and uh, of, by Argent Argentina of the Falklands. Um, they had the 150th anniversary of the original British settlement in uh, the Falklands, and they issued this commemorative note, brand new design, uh, Falkland Islands um, coat of arms is lower left, some penguins, because that's the predominant wildlife is penguins on the left and sea lions on the right, um, and then a, a, an updated and rather better portrait of the Queen. Uh, and uh, in the background of the centre of the note there, you can see uh, an outline map of the Falklands themselves. Um, and the five pound note was joined by other denominations um, from 1983 onwards. Uh, and here's on the left, the one pound note, which didn't last that long, it was replaced by a coin. And the lower right here, the 50 pound note, uh, and again, tiny print run. I mean, I think they've only, even now after, um, uh, 30 years, they've probably only issued about 15,000 of those notes, so there's not much to call for them. Um, the other thing I think is worth noting with these um, notes, in uh, you can find this thing online, but there was a, a government um, memorandum about buying new banknotes, um, and the Falkland Islanders said, put this thing online, um, it's dated 2011, and they they estimated then that they were they needed about 16, 17,000 ten pound notes a year, and maybe 15,000 20 pound notes a year. So you know they didn't use many notes, and they reckoned at that point that they had another 14 years worth of supply of five pound notes, um, and of course they haven't had any more printed since um, you know the 1990s. Um, and the problem, the reason this came up is that they had to order some new notes because they were running low on the uh, the tens and twenties. Um, but um, Delarue wouldn't accept an order of less than a hundred thousand notes, um, and the unit cost per note went down sharply if you had a bigger order. And so, what they did was they ordered two hundred thousand new uh, tens and new twenties. Um, because it was virtually the same cost as ordering 100,000, because the unit cost came down. But um, they reckon that was 15 to 20 years supply. So they got those notes now, and they're beginning to appear, not the 20 yet, because they haven't used the old 20s up yet, but the new tenor with a prefix B, um, I think now is now available, but um, nothing's gonna happen. So numismatically speaking, the Falklands is not the most fascinating uh, uh, part of the world, um, as I say, tiny print runs, they use very few of the notes, um, and, you know, they've got massive supplies, which uh, it's going to take them an awful long time to work through. Uh, so that's the Falklands for you. Um, now I'm going to move on to Gibraltar, which is the next one on the, uh, the list. Oh, sorry, that's the reverse of the Falklands note. Uh, it's a standard design on the same as all of them, uh, the colours vary, but uh, that's a picture of Government House, which is on the left and the centre, and the Christ Church on the right, which is the, the cathedral of um, uh, the Falklands. Um, and quite attractive, but um, as I say, it hasn't varied, it won't vary for, for many years to come. <laughs> and I thought I would just chuck this in. Um, here's a nice map of the Falklands, but it's on an Argentinian note. Um, and uh, this, this was this was issued in, in Argentina, I think about five or six years ago, just to, as a reminder to themselves and to the rest of the world that um, they've got a valid and uh, strong claim on the Falklands. But um, I don't think there's going to be any change in the realities on the ground in the near future, because the, the, the Falkland Islanders are not in the least bit um, interested in getting closer to Argentina in, a, in the political sense. Um, so there we are. That's uh, that's an ongoing uh, problem, I think, for the locals. Now, Gibraltar is also a contested territory. Um, it's a tiny peninsula stuck on the end of Spain um, and um, across the Straits of Gibraltar from North Africa. Now, um, in Gibraltar, 
um, which is incidentally is named after a, a gentleman called Jebel Tariq, um, who was one of the Moorish invaders who came over from North Africa and invaded, captured Gibraltar in 700 AD, and the Moors gradually invaded and uh, settled in most of Spain, which is why if you go to places like uh, Cordoba, you see an amazing mosque, which is it's been Christianized in the in the religious sense, but it's the original building, and it's quite clearly a, a mosque from the design of it. Um, but anyway, Jebel Tariq gave his name to um, Gibraltar. The first notes there weren't issued until 1914, and the reason for that is outbreak of First World War. Britain came off the gold standard, and so gold sovereigns and smaller uh, gold and silver coins uh, became quite scarce. And so in Gibraltar, they started to issue uh, money. Those, first of all here, and this is dated the uh, 6th of August, 1914, um, there's a two shilling note. Now, there's a whole series of these, um, and they were printed locally. They're very, very simple designs, um, and actually very hard to get hold of today. Um, Greenwood is the name of the colonial treasurer there, which uh, might ring a bell for some of you. Um, and um, he, um, I don't think that's actually a hand signature. I think that's, I think that's stamped on rather than actually hand signed. But uh, there he is, uh, and these these notes um, were issued and circulated for a very brief period of time. They were replaced within months, literally within months, uh, by this series. Um, this is the two shillings again, uh, same date, same signature, but it's printed this time. And you probably can't see it on here, but this note, all the previous ones and all of the issued ones of this design had a, an embossed stamp of the Anglo-Egyptian -Egy Bank, which was the main commercial bank operating in Gibraltar and was responsible for issuing the note, these notes. And they put this embossed stamp on each one as they issued it. The two shillings is not that difficult to find. You can get it in very good grade, but the other denominations, which I'm going to show you, are much more difficult to find uh, nowadays. Here's a 10 shilling note. This is a, a proof. Um, it's in, the color is lilac. It may not look lilac on your screen, but it is lilac in reality. Uh, that's 10 shillings. Um, there was a pound note. Now here's an issued pound note in blue with a green background. And wow, that's a lovely note, but very, very hard to find. Very hard indeed. Sadly, not mine, this one. And for those of you who have bottomless wallets, um, have a go at the fiver here, or even have a go at the 50. Um, this 50 is uh, it's not a very good image, actually. But this fifty-pound note is uh, a specimen. It's in the um, it's in the, one of the uh, ones in the British Library. They've got two of these. They've got two sets, by the way. And I don't think they're going to be letting go of any of them. Um, but you can go and see it in in the British Library when it reopens. Uh, an incredibly rare note. It'd be wonderful to have one of these things. But um, I don't believe any issued ones have survived. I'm sure they didn't issue many in the first place. But uh, anyway, that's the, that's the uh, the second issue. Also, um, as you can see, August 1914. Um, now, what I'm going to show you next are some of the unissued designs that started to um, appear in the 1920s. Um, it took until 1927. This series that you're seeing here circulated through most of the 1920s um, and was replaced in 1927 by The Rock series. Um, but this here is a, uh, a Bradbury Wilkins. This is one of these um, archival photographs of the note that they submitted for consideration in Gibraltar. Um, it wasn't obviously adopted. And so all we have is this photograph of this 10 shilling note dated 1926. And, uh, and it's a beautiful design. Um, it, it's a shame, you know, the, these photographic proofs um, that came out of an old archive or a series of ledgers um, uh, that were thrown out by De La Rue, um, are full of unadopted designs that Bradbury Wilkinson prepared for, for banks and 
central banks all around the world. And a lot of them are ones that were not adopted. And all we've got is a photograph. And this one is it's a beautiful note. I mean, that little vignette there of the young uh, female is one that is reminiscent of notes that I've seen on uh, uh, banknotes in South America, Mexico and other countries. And I suspect um, Brad Big Wilkinson was um, attempting to reuse a, a, a vignette that they'd already used on other notes. Anyway, this never saw the light of day other than the photograph. Um, and this one, here's another one. It's another Bradbury Wilkinson um, design. It's, the, it's a five pound note. Uh, it's dated 1929, um, which is actually after the uh, approved rock design notes came out, which I'll be coming on to shortly. It's got a picture of uh, the rock of Gibraltar on it down there at the center. Uh, it's got the coat of arms of Gibraltar on the right, but again, it's an unadopted design and intriguing. We don't even know what colors they put in this. We'll, all we've got is a photograph. Very frustrating. Now I've got a couple more unadopted designs. This is one uh, that Delarue prepared for a two shilling note. Uh, it's dated 1938. And I think in the run up to the Second World War, um, there were considerations being given in Gibraltar to having a two shilling note in case they ran out of small change. And this was a, a proof uh, prepared by Delarue, which is obviously unadopted. Um, now there's, there's another, two, another two Bob note here. This is, that this is actually Bradley Wilkinson's design. Um, it got as far as being prepared as a full color banknote. And this is their specimen. And the Bradbury Wilkinson specimens give indications of the print run. So it looks as if they were going to, or maybe they even did print 200,000 of these two shilling notes, but they were never actually issued. Um, and one or two of these specimens have survived and jolly rare they are too, and um, are suitably expensive. Um, so that was unadopted. Now this was a series that did come out. Uh, you can see 1927. Uh, this is actually Waterloo. So they won the design, they won the uh, the competition to prepare these notes. Delarue um, didn't get the contract. Uh, Bradbury Wilkinson didn't get the contract. Waterloo's did, and this is the Waterloo note as issued. This is the ten shilling notes. Very pretty design. It's signed by a gentleman called Mr. Bowring, and this uh, chap Bowring. Um, is for those of you who collect Cyprus notes will recognize that um, before he came to Gibraltar, he was actually um, in Cyprus. He was obviously a colonial uh, administrator in the uh, British Empire Colonial Service, and uh, he got signed notes in Cyprus. So he's it's a rare example of an individual signing notes for two completely different uh, countries or territories. So here's Boring on the Tembob. And here he is on the pound and the fiver. And these early 1927 Rock of Gibraltar notes are quite hard to find nowadays, especially in good grade. But it's a lovely series and one you can easily specialize in because you've got different dates, you've got different signatures. Um, the uh, serial and prefix designs change, uh, the type of paper changes. Uh, Waterloo is replaced by Delarue because they got taken over by Delarue, so you've got a different imprint. So there's lots of small varieties of this series, and they're great for collectors in that sense. I, I like these notes very much. Um, and here's a close-up of the rock itself. This is the side of the rock where, in the foreground today, is the, the airport, the airfield. Um, but uh, as you can see, it's, it's, it's quite a good engraving. Um, you can just see in the distance, there's a ship out at sea there. And if you've got really good eyesight down the, that little embellishment on the lower left-hand corner of this image, um, you can see the, the letter Y, that is the plate letter. And um, Waterloo's are well known for using the plate letters on, on, their, on their notes. Um, because they were printed, there was a, there would be the master engraving, and then they would transfer that onto 
a large plate which would have maybe eight, 16, maybe more images. And the place that it was located on the note was recorded by these little plate letters. So you could actually, if you really wanted, try to collect these notes by getting all the ones with the different plate letters on. Um, anyway, that's, it's, it's, it's something that in numismatic terms has not been completely researched, I think, for any of the Waterloo series. Um, but, you know, it's the sort of thing that anyone who's uh, into philately uh, would really get into. Because you can get all the different ones uh, and you can recreate a full plate of the original notes. Um, now, that was uh, in 1975, um, the authorities in Gibraltar decided they were going to replace the, uh, the rock notes. And also, they, they were for the first time going to put the Queen on. And here she is in the 1975 series. Um, there was a pound note for this series, and then the 5, 10, 20, and then a little bit later, the 50 came along. Um, very attractive notes, I think. Um, the, the reverse of these notes is uh, different views and buildings um, in Gibraltar. Um, these are Delarue productions now, of course. Um, even though it's 1975, Delarue had kept the contract um, and um, they've been printing the notes ever since. Um, now, here's the reverse of the 50. Uh, a nice aerial view of Gibraltar. This is from the south. So the airfield would be the other side of the rock. So you can't see it from this side. But you, this will be taken as if you're flying over the Straits of Gibraltar looking north. And on the left-hand side there, you can see the very, very uh, substantial port facilities. It's a big naval port as well as a commercial port. Um, and had, obviously huge uh, strategic importance in the First and the Second uh, World Wars. And, and obviously, that's one of the reasons why Britain has wanted to hang on to Gibraltar in the first place. Um, now, a, a later series came along in 1995. And here's a more mature portrait of the Queen. Um, and this, this series, this is the... Um, uh, this is a fifth design. So we went through we went through the um, provisional series in 1914. Then there's the better printed 1914 series. Then the rock designs. Um, then the first series with the Queen's portrait. And now we've got this, the fifth series, uh, a more mature por portrait. We've got historical characters on the reverses of all these notes of this series. Um, and the most interesting of those is the 50 pound note here. This was the first note, um, as far as I know, in the world uh, to feature Winston Churchill on the back. And the second note is our current column of five pound notes. I don't think Churchill's been on any other bank notes. I'm sure somebody will correct me if that's not right. And for those of you who collect aircraft on bank notes, this is the only bank note you'll find with Spitfires on the back. And it's a wartime image. There's the, the obviously on the airfield there, and that's the rock in the background. So it's a great banknote to get, actually. Um, purely, I mean, as much for the reverse as anything else, actually. Um, so, so that series was um, ran from 1995 till about 2010, when uh, once again the the uh, government of Gibraltar decided that they would. Um, start to replace them. Now, I mentioned earlier, um, this here, going back to 1975, it just says five pounds on the note. We don't say anything more. You roll forward again here and you've got 1995 and it says five pounds sterling or 10 pounds sterling rather on this note. So they added the word sterling from 1995 on, on their notes. Now, uh, the, the Gibraltar pound is not sterling, but all the notes that are issued in Gibraltar are fully backed by sterling. And obviously they're at par and will always be at par because if you got one of these notes, there's no point taking it to the Bank of England because they won't honor it. Um, but the government of Gibraltar has got sterling currency and sterling securities as backing for these. Uh, and so they felt that to emphasize the, uh, the, the solidity of their currency, 
and its uh, value uh, relative to the pound sterling, that they would stick the word sterling on the notes. But it's not technically sterling. This note is not legal tender in the UK, can't be used in the UK, and it would not be honoured by the Bank of England if, uh, if, if for any reason Gibraltar was unable to um, honour the notes themselves. Um, I mean, I went through all this. I, ha I interviewed the uh, chief cashier of the uh, Bank of England several years ago now, and I, I was interested in all these sterling issues, not only the ones in places like Gibraltar and Falklands, but also um, the Jersey, Guernsey and Isle of Man ones. And, you know, he was very, very clear. He said, look, there's nothing to do with us, Gov. You know, you know they've got their own arrangements. They're not allowed to increase the sterling um, money supply. Um, and that that is a clear rule by the Bank of England. Only the Bank of England can um, do anything to increase or decrease the, uh, the sterling money supply. They, they've got monopoly powers in that respect. Um, but these, these notes are backed by sterling. Um, but that's, as far as the Bank of England concerned, is a decision of the issuing authorities um, and they've got to back their notes one by one, one for one, if they're going to uh, issue them and call them pounds. But they're not backed by or honoured by the Bank of England. You can't take any of these issues, Isle of Man, Jersey, Guernsey, Gibraltar, any of them. You can't take them into the Bank of England and expect to get a, a Bank of England note in exchange for them. They wouldn't do that. Um, and as I say, they come from it, the point of view um, that they control the money supply. And, and these other countries are perfectly welcome to use sterling, um, but they got to back it 100% with, um, they can't do it. And in, they would in no way be increasing sterling money supply because that's uh, reserved to the Bank of England. But notwithstanding any of that, sterling appears on these Gibraltar notes. And as we move forward to the new issues, they keep the word sterling on here. And um, in 2011 here, this is the current series of um, Gibraltar notes um, with a very interesting sort of almost in the background portrait of the Queen. Again, it's a more mature portrait um, and a very interesting design. I, I quite like this design, I must admit, but not everybody does. And as you can see, they've added a hundred pound note to it uh, for the first time, first hundred pound note. Uh, that has been issued in uh, Gibraltar. Um, and here's, here's a reverse of the, uh, the £10 note. Uh, they've taken one of the images off the, an earlier £10 note and, and, and expanded it to cover most of the note. And the whole of this new series, they've got, stylistically, they're very similar uh, designs. It's just a £10 note. But if you look at the others, you'll see that the the design elements with the word Gibraltar, very large letters in the background, and this kind of curved X feature um, is on all of these, um, all of this series. Very nice notes though. Um, and who knows how long they will stay in circulation. They've, they've, been, they've only been out now for about 10 years. So I, I suspect they've got a bit of life left in them. So, um, and then finally, just to, as, a, as a curiosity really, um, in 2018, um, the 10 shilling note was revived by the government as a tourist note. And um, this uh, was redeemable in 2018, but not afterwards for 50 pence um, by tourists um, who stopped off in Gibraltar. Um, and as you can see, it's identical pretty much to the, the, the earlier, much earlier issued notes, but they put a different serial number on. Um, and made it clear on the back um, the the what was that, what the piece of paper actually represented. But anyway, that's it for Gibraltar. Um, I'm going to move on now to somewhere far more re remote, which is Saint Helena. Um, now, Saint Helena's got had four issues of notes. There was the uh, the seventeen seven seventeen sixteen to seventeen twenty two issue. There was a 1917 issue, and then from 1975 onwards, there was the, um, uh, the, the modern current issues, um, which um, they passed a law 
um, saying that they could, uh, the government could issue legal tender notes. Um, prior to 1975, they used sterling uh, and the South African rand. But um, what I'm going to show you is an exceptionally rare note. Um, this is the a two and sixpence note from 1722. And as far as I know, this is the only survivor of this series of notes. Uh, exceptionally rare. Um, this one was sold in 1999 in Phillips, the auction house that's now part of Bonhams, for, I can't remember the exact figure, um, but it's over £5,000. Uh, that was 20 years ago. So, uh, fantastic uh, piece of paper. Uh, I never saw it at the time, and certainly it would have been beyond my pocket probably uh, 20 years ago. But um, I've never seen any others. I'm, there were other denominations, I believe, but nothing else has survived, to my knowledge. Um, so what you're seeing there is something that um, disappeared off, I believe, into a private collection. I mean, it, it, you can find a St. Helena government website with this image on it, but I don't think they own the note. I'm sure they would tell everybody if they did. Um, anyway, that was uh, 17 in the 1720s. Now, uh, they didn't issue notes till, again, until locally, until 1917. And the 1917 issue, um, no, no survivor, so I can't show you an image. Uh, there were apparently five shillings, 20 shillings, or 40 shilling notes issued um, in, in 1917, but no survivor's seen. Nobody knows what the design looks like. Um, and um, even the government of St. Helena on their website um, haven't got nothing to say about them. Um, so we move on from 1722 and 1917, we move on to the current series. Um, and, and again, these are, these are very attractive notes, obviously got Queen on them, all of them ha have the Queen on. Uh, they're issued by the government themselves. This is a 50 pence note. Um, they never issued a 10 shilling note because decimalization had already taken place. Um, the main vignette on the left there, that is a, a Jamestown. Most of these notes seem to have images of a picture of Jamestown taken as if seeing it from uh, the sea, looking towards the land. And the, the centre of Jamestown is down in that deep valley. Today, um, if you look at the, that image, you'll see that at the top of the hillside, so the upper right of that little image, uh, is now covered in housing. So the population has grown, not by that much, I have to say, but um, they've spread themselves out from the centre of the town. Population of St Helena currently is about 4,500, 4,000, 4,500 people. So it's more than the Falklands, um, but not much. And as you can see from this design, the 50 pence, there's a kind of stylized five and a zero there. And that's a feature of this series. You see these kind of stylized numbers so to, to uh, uh, make it clear what denomination it is. And this is the reverse. Uh, now, an interesting feature here, the, the coat of arms on the left here is of the, um, is the East India Company's coat of arms. Now, the reason for that is that St. Helena was actually first settled by uh, representatives, I suppose you'd call them, um, of the um, East India Company. Uh, now, the East India Company obviously were, were um, interested in exploiting um, the natural riches of India. But in those days, the only way to get to India from, from Britain was by sea. And so St. Helena became a very important stopover point for, for ships on their way out to India. And so it was settled and became permanently settled um, by um, the East India Company, who actually ran the colony uh, for many years. And hence their coat of arms appears on these modern notes, even though they've got no longer got a, any direct connection with uh, the, the running of the colony. Um, so that's, that's the 50 pence. Um, and here's the pound note. Um, and if you can see that, image on the right hand side is just a sort of stylized one and the main vignette is a very early uh, depiction of um, taken from an old print 
of um, uh, the island of St Helena with Jamestown and all the East India Company ships out at anchor there. And here's the five pound note, it's a different view, but more or less the same one, just probably a slightly later image. Um, and that's the five pound note. Um, now, the interesting thing about the five pound note, and I think this occurred on one other denomination, is that they got a spelling mistake on the back. So the East India Company um, uh, motto, um, which is in Latin, auspicio regis et senatus angliae, under the auspices of the King and Parliament of England, um, was misspelt on the uh, first of these uh, five pound notes. They missed the I out of angliae, and later they added it in. They didn't withdraw these notes with the error on, they just allowed them to circulate, because they'd already spent the money printing them, having them shipped out there and so on. So they just continued to use them, but it's an interesting one uh, for collectors Collectors who want to be thorough about these things, you need one with the, the, error, the um, error on it, and you want one um, without the error. And, and these are close-ups just to show you how you can spot that. And it circulated for, for five years, six years, uh, that particular error. Um, now, they added a £10 note in 1979. Um, once again, there's the image from the sea of Jamestown on, on that note. Very attractive note, I think. Possibly the nicest of them all. And then there was a £20 note. Um, and this is a slightly more recent image of, of Jamestown. As you can see in the far background of that image, um, a little bit of buildings up the hillside there in the distance. But um, again, it's just the same, same view. And a stylized 2 and a 0 to show people it's a 20. And that's the back, which just has the... Um, uh, East India's uh, coat of arms on the East India Company's coat of arms, correctly spelt in the, the motto. That's the 20. Uh, 2011, it, it, I've blown the image up, but it, it's actually uh, a smaller size note than the £20 note it replaced. This is the current issue of the 20, and um, they've got different reverses on with a great big stylized 10 and a great big stylized 20 for the two uh, denominations that they brought in in 2004. Um, and there you are. That's it, folks. Um